Welcome to IET Labs demonstration of the 7600 Plus along with the LD3 dielectric cell and all of the associated accessories designed to measure dielectric constant and dissipation factor on rigid materials. I've now connected all of the cables to the associated cell. The cell itself is sitting on its side, but you can basically see the 874 connector on this side with a BNCT. Another BNCT on this side with the associated BNC to banana connector. One side of the banana, the red side, is connected to the movable electrode. The other side is connected to the cell. The next step is to actually configure the 7600 Plus by first pressing the menu button. This allows you access to the four menu views within the 7600 Plus, which is setup, I.O. menu, analysis menu, utilities menu, which we'll do open and short, and we'll do that in just a moment. From a setup standpoint, only thing you should really have to do is go down to frequency, enter, and set in the frequency using the keypad. In this case, we're just going to enter 1 kilohertz, 1, and then we can use the up key to enter K, the kilohertz, and press the enter button. Enters in 1 kilohertz. We should go down to measurement accuracy. Again, press enter. Use the arrow keys to go down to slow. And we can also add an average. So let's enter an average of three. If we'd like at this point, we could actually go over to utilities and go to save setup. And save setup as default. This way, every time we power the unit on, it will come back to the setup that we want to do. The next step that we're actually going to do is configure the cell to do opens and shorts because we've got to compensate for the cables and the adapters that we have attached to the cell. So we press enter on the open and short, and the first thing we want to do is a short. Performing a short is not particularly important, mainly because we're measuring low capacitance, so it's pretty much dominated by open. So in this particular case, I just removed the 874 and the BNC to banana adapters, and just connected the two T's using another T. Uh, this allows them to be basically all connected for a short. Once we've done that, we can go over to the 7600 Plus, which is still setting at connect the short. We now have the connect, short connected, and all we have to do is press the start button. At this point, the unit will indicate it's doing a short. The short takes roughly four or five minutes, so we'll be back in a moment. Once the short is completed, the 7600 Plus shows this menu indicating complete. We can now press the menu button, and we can now select open. Open is going to be one of the most important um, connections. So basically to do an open, we're going to have the cell configured exactly the way we're going to make a measurement. Now, the movable electrode should be moved out. The open is going to be the most important connection. You can see the 874 connected here along with the T. You can see that we've got it set up for basically measurement configuration. BNCT here out to banana with the pigtail. We've moved the electrode all the way out using the micrometer. We then disconnect. The red banana. We make sure it does not touch the body of the dielectric cell. We want to make sure that we keep the pigtail right here. We want to make sure the 874 is well connected here. Once we've done that, over on the 7600, we can then press start to perform the open. Again, the open takes several minutes, so we'll be back. At this point, the open has completed. We can press the menu key and the menu key once more to get back. At this point, we're back to the measurement menu. We can then reconnect the cell by reconnecting the banana. So 
so that it's connected into the cell. We happen to have also the optional TS100, which is a Teflon standard, has a known dielectric constant, in this case 2.048. We can then take the Teflon standard, place it in the sample holder, so it's now in the sample holder. With it in the sample holder, we can adjust the micrometer so the movable electrode sandwiches the Teflon standard in between. We don't want to apply too, too much pressure. Once we've done that, we can then press start and have the 7600 plus perform a measurement. Since we do, are doing an average of three, it takes a little bit of time. But you can see at this point, it has a capacitance value of 12.43 and a dissipation factor of 0016. At this point, we'd basically write down on a piece of paper the, dielectric, the capacitance, and we'd also write down the dissipation factor. So now that we've got those two values written down, we also take a look at the micrometer and see what the micrometer setting is. Once we've done that, we can basically loosen up the micrometer. So we're basically at 7. We can loosen up the micrometer to, say, 15. At this point, we should be able to dump the Teflon standard out of the cell. Manage to do that nicely. Turn it back over. And in this particular case, we're going to adjust the micrometer once again back to 7. We can then now, on the 7600 perform another measurement. In this case, we're doing measurement of capacitance in air because the dielectric constant is basically the ratio of capacitance with the sample in the cell to the ratio of capacitance without the cell. So again, we can basically come over to our paper and write the value down, 6.118 picofarads, dissipation factor 0.000018, At this point, we can basically take the capacitance we measured with the sample, divide it by the capacitance in air. That gives us a dielectric constant of 2.032. We can also take the dissipation factor that we measured with the sample, subtract the dissipation factor in air. This gives us the dissipation factor of the material. So 0001, somewhat typical of Teflon, could be a little bit lower than that. Dielectric constant 2.032 compares quite well with the calibrated value of 2.048. This is really all there is to basic dielectric constant measurements with the 7600 plus and the LD3 cell. Thank you.